So let's talk about this global drought and whether things are getting better. I'm joined from Los Angeles by hydrologist Jay Famoletti. He's a professor of earth science, system science and a civil and environmental engineering at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let me start by talking about El Nino conditions. They, they either ended or they are ending. What does that mean for the global drought? Well, uh, you're right. So the, the global um, uh, El Nino conditions are petering out. Um, and so that may mean in some places that there's relief of, uh, of drought conditions. However, we are headed into uh, La Nina conditions, which are the opposite phase of, of El Nino. Um, and in some, some places, we'll see the regions getting wetter, and some places, we'll see the regions getting drier. In Venezuela, the expectation is uh, for, for increased precipitation. But you're right. We, we started by talking about El Nino. And as you mentioned, there is this other weather phenomenon known as La Nina. I want to play a quick clip from a video uh, put out by a U.S. weather agency kind of describing the differences between the two. During normal conditions, trade winds, which blow from east to west, push warm surface waters towards Asia, piling it up in the western Pacific. In some years, though, the trade winds weaken, the warm surface water moves eastward and reduces upwelling of cold water off the coast of South America. Climatologists call this El Nino. But eventually, those trade winds pick up again and sometimes become even stronger than normal. When that happens, they blow the warm water back into the western Pacific and restart the upwelling of cool water towards the surface in the eastern Pacific. These strong trade winds are a signature of what is called La Nina. I think that's a nice way of framing it. So we know what El Nino has done. What's La Nina going to produce? Well, it depends on the region. Again, some places will get wetter and some places will get drier. We know here in California, where I am, we're expecting it to be drier. Um, in many parts of the world, like Venezuela, we expect it to actually be colder and wetter. And how about storms? Will we see more storms, less storms? Well, uh, to accompany that colder and wetter uh, uh, phenomenon, we'll definitely see an increase uh, in the amount uh, and frequency of, of, of heavy storms. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about El Nino, and we've also uh, heard so much about climate change. Uh, how much of this drought is, uh, can you blame on El Nino? How much of it is climate change? Is it a mixture of the two? Um, how would you put it? I think the reality is that it's a mixture of the two. What, what we're seeing in our science is that uh, the frequency and the intensity of El Ninos uh, are both increasing, and the expectation is that they will continue to increase into the future. Uh, so at this point, it's a mixture of both, and I think the expectation is that things will worsen, and, and uh, that will wreak havoc on uh, the variability of water availability, um, and in particular, some of the issues with hydropower you were discussing in Venezuela. And uh, that makes the Paris climate deal all that much more important. Uh, should it have gone further, do you think? Well, I, I think it was a tall order to go further to, to go further than we did. Uh, but but you're right. Uh, the links between El Nino and climate change are getting stronger. Our understanding of those links uh, is getting stronger, and so I think that's going to mean a stronger push. Uh, uh, for stricter measures in the future. Jay, thanks so much for joining us for Los Angeles. Certainly appreciate it.